Hello, this is the second part of lecture seven, looking at solving problems where the unknown is on the right side of the equation. So as you can see here on this first slide, for type two problems, you're given all of the concentrations that are on the left side of the equation. And you're solving for either depth or duration t. It's unusual that you would be solving for the diffusivity because that's usually not something that you could, are going to adjust because you know, the temperature uh, of your operation isn't going to change. So here is an example, three different parts to the example. I have um, a 1020 steel, so that, that gives me my um, C sub zero. I have temperature, and from that I can get diffusion, and I use the same temperature as we did in the previous um, uh, set of slides. So D, we calculated it already at, for, at um, 1,000 C is 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11 meters squared per second. Um, I'm given my surface concentration C sub S, so I have all the concentrations um, because part one, how long will it take in hours? So there's my unknown for the carbon concentration to reach 0.4 weight percent carbon. That's C sub X at a depth of two millimeters. That's X. So I have C sub X, C zero, C S, I have the depth x, I know d, and I'm solving for duration time t. So here's my problem. And so I could set this up saying, uh, let's see, 0 0.4, that's c sub x, minus 0 0.2, that's the base concentration over 3 minus 0 0.2 is equal to 1 minus the error function of x, which is 2 millimeters or 0 0.002 meters, divided by 2, square root d. I'm using the same temperature as before, so that's 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11 and then my unknown times t. So for now, I'm gonna just call this whole big quantity z. Left side of the equation, I've got 0 0.2 over 2.8. That's be equal to one minus air function of z. And if I solve that, then I get that the error function of z is equal to 0 0.9286. So if you look at this table, where uh, z is equal to 1.2, the error function of z is... 0.9103, and where z is 1.3, the error function of z is 0.934. And I have that the errors, error function of z is right in between there, 0.9286, and I need to solve for z. So I'm going to interpolate. And there are a number of ways of interpolating here, but um, I'll show you the way that I do this. I'll say z minus 1.2 divided by 1.3 minus 1.2 is equal to 0.9286 minus 0.9103 divided by 0.934. 
minus 0 0.9103. And if I do that, I'll find that z is equal to 1.275. Okay, just going to continue on to this next page. If z, which is equal to 0 0.002 divided by 2 square root 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11, Square root time. And we found that was equal to 1.275. Then I rearrange here, I get the square root of time is going to be equal to 0 0.002 divided by 2 times 1.275 times the square root of 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11. So if I solved that for square root of t and then squared it, I'll get that t is equal to 31,000, mm, rounding it, 31,900 seconds. So almost nine hours. So under those conditions, it takes me almost nine hours to achieve that C sub X value of 0.4. All right, now for follow-up questions. Given that, I might be asked a follow-up. Okay, so it takes almost nine hours when this is conducted uh, and when we're measuring it down to two millimeters below the surface. What if I was measuring to three millimeters below the surface? So the variable that I'm changing is x. but everything on the left side of the equation is staying the same. And if all of that is staying the same, then error function of z must be staying the same. And so z must be the same. And so in the, uh, in the previous example, my value for z uh, what was it? 1.275? Let's see. Yeah. So Z is still 1.275. Okay. And I have changed X. I already knew D was 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11, I want to know then what is the change for time or duration t. Okay, so z is 1.275 is equal to x. Now that is 0 0.003 over 2 square root 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11 square root of time. Rearranging, I have the square root of time is now 0 0.003 divided by 2 times 1.275 times the square root 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11. And that gives me a square root of t equal to 268, so that t is 71,700 
seconds or almost 19 or sorry almost 20 hours so it was almost what it was almost nine hours to get down to 0 0.002 now it's almost 20 hours to get down to 0 0.003 notice for that follow-up I didn't use the error function table I didn't have to if you um, forget about that shortcut and you just start over with this new set of variables you won't you don't make a mistake it just takes longer to solve the problem all right the last follow-up the second follow-up says okay keep the surface concentration at um, I'm sorry surface concentration number one Okay, so we're changing the surface concentration from 3 weight percent carbon to 2 weight percent carbon, but everything else is to stay the same. Now what will T time be? So I'm changing something on the left side of the equation. And since I'm changing something on the other side of the equation, from the thing that I'm trying to measure, I need to run the whole uh, the, the whole problem through and 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 redo my error function calculations. All right, so um, I now have zero point four minus point two over two minus point two equal 1 minus error function of z. I'm just writing z for now so I don't have to carry around all the other stuff right now. This ends up being equal to 0 0.1111. So error function z is 0.8889. which is between 0 0.8802 and 0 0.9103. And so if you interpolate error function of z will be equal to 0.8889 when z is equal to 1.116 instead of what we had last time of 1.275. So that means 1.116 is equal to x divided by 2 square root of d, which is, since I'm doing everything at 1,000 centigrade, I'm, d is not changing. Square root of pi. And from this, you'll find that the time is 11.6 hours. All right. So that's a, there's an example there of a problem where the unknown is on the right side of the equation, a follow-up where you're changing something on the right side of the equation, and a follow-up where you're changing something on the other side of the equation and have to recalculate your unknowns.